Okay, uh, the truth is that I actually like delayed figuring out what my talk is for a long time. So like any good React developer, I've encapsulated it behind a component and I'll do the implementation later. Uh, but anyway, so you guys want to know the secret. I'm dropping a new CSS and JS library right now. Are you excited about this? No, it's okay, I'm just joking. You don't have to take it seriously. Uh, really what I want to talk about is like the time I've had in open source. Uh, and some of the things that have happened. So I consider myself one of the OG hipsters of React Europe because we were here the first year uh, and like it was awesome, it was amazing. And a lot of things happened around the time. And I want to give you some examples of some of the things I got involved in. I'm not taking credit for any of it, but like it's been interesting. So we were doing render props way back then. I'm sorry all you folks who are doing it in the last year, but again, hipster. Uh, what happened was uh, Eli Rotenberg did a little demo of his library, I think it was React Nexus, and he used this pattern, and we were all like, what? Like, you're putting a function as children, and then I collected links, put up a post on discourse, the React discourse, which nobody uses from the look of it. Uh, but what that resulted in is me and Cheng sim kind of simultaneously figuring out the API for React Motion, and that, I think, was the first large-scale, like, render prop API. That was fun. Uh, similarly, I met Dan Abramov and he saw a little Redux library I had done that showed how to do hot loading reducers and he gives credit to me in the, whoo, I'm, I'm in the readme. Uh, and then he came up with Redux and he demoed it here on this very stage, so hallowed ground. Uh, I'm also possibly res responsible for the render prop API in the React re router rewrite. I'm sorry you folks had to rewrite stuff, but it's just way better, you know it. So I put up a post and to be fair, they were already thinking about it, but I think I gave them the nudge. Then of course, uh, I got involved. So I was unemployed and I wanted like kill time. So I made a little library for CSS called Glamour and then suddenly it went really big and like a number of offshoots happened. There's Glamorous by Kent C. Dodds. Remember that name, I'll talk about him again in a bit. Uh, but it's awesome, he wrote a little thing on top of it and they use it in PayPal. Uh, then another, somebody else reached out to me about a library that I demoed here last year uh, about runtime free like CSS and JS and he did, he built this entire library out of just those ideas called Emotion. It's amazing, you should just use it. Another friend of mine, Satya, who works at Callstack, he reached out to me but wanted to take it in a different direction and came up with this completely zero runtime CSS and JS library. Uh, and if you folks are in Reason land, if you're using Reason and the best solution out there is BS CSS, I say this because it runs on top of Glamour, so haha, <laughs> clearly it's good. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so like I've been kind of involved in a bunch of things. Uh, to be clear, I'm not, oh, actually there's another example. This is recent. The, I made a little library called Markdown in JS that did like inline Markdown, but compiled out by the time you actually send it to the browser. The folks at Zite saw it and they were like, oh shit, like we want this. And they hated my solution so much that they just rewrote the entire thing and it's amazing, it's called MDX. Uh, it's really nice to get other people to do your ideas for you, right? Uh, but yeah, so like I've been involved and it's been amazing. And the point here is not, I'm not trying to take credit for any of these, that's, that's clearly not the point. The entire point is how much I love open source. You know how in React your view is a function of your state? Well in open source, I am like a function of all of you and everybody out here there watching the live stream and tweeting at me, hating on me for CSS and JS. But the real thing is that this is fun. This is just the best part of my day in a world that seems like it has more bad news on a daily basis, right? Like, and that's what open source is to me. And I like that this is the direction that the React ecosystem has come where we're continuously pushing the boundaries and finding what's new. So what I want to talk about is what I think is next. What I think we as an industry should start investing in, specifically for ourselves. Uh, I want to talk about this very specifically. I I want to talk about how I learned how to do web development. I wrote a post about it, I'll have a link, but this is a short form. Uh, I was doing really badly in college. Uh, I hadn't gotten my degree, I had flunked a couple of years, uh, and all my friends already had jobs and stuff. So I found myself uh, with a job in a tiny uh, development office in Hyderabad, India. And this lovely woman, Ramya, she sat down, she's like, okay, I'm gonna teach you how to write code. Okay, so you make yourself an index.html file, ooh, that color does not, okay, that's a div for those who can't see it. Uh, you write an index.html file, I still have no idea why it's called index, and if any of you do, like, do you ever wonder why index.js? Anyway, it doesn't really contain an index of anything. Uh, so, write hello world, save, restart, right? It just works, there's no compilation, no nothing. I'm like, wow, that's impressive. Next step, you use the hello world of CSS, which is to do color red, 
I think if we had a color that was two characters, that's the one that we would use, but this is the one that we use. So color red, hello world, refresh. Done, it looks a particular way. Next, you add like an on click and you say alert, I miss FB pokes. By the way, don't you think FB pokes was the best part of Facebook? I think everything after that has just been to reclaim that glory where you could poke somebody and neither of you would know like why you did it. You're like, <laughs> it just, like, anyway, so I miss FB pokes. Anyway, so I learned this. And this was amazing. I was like, holy shit, like in th like four lines of code, only because I formatted it, I've learned how to structure data, to style it, and make it behave a particular way. I was like, I'm gonna be a startup millionaire like next week. Like, this I can do forever. This is amazing. At which point Ramya looks at me and says, you will never write code this way. This is incredibly bad practices. You have an inline handler, inline styles. What you're going to have to do is pull out all your HTML into something called templates, of which there were 400 at the time, and you didn't even know which one to use. Oh, also, you can never write styles like that. You have to use style sheets, which means you have to learn how selectors work and the cascade works. And I was like, why? But like, why? Why, why, why do you have to do this? Also, you can't use behavior. You have to do something called event delegation. Anybody remember that? Writing backbone views with event delegation. And you have to use CSS selectors to target the elements. I'm like, this makes no sense. Like, and of course, like the big three dreaded words that would take up the rest of like my waking hours, models, views, controllers. Like, I won't even say I've even understood it completely at this point. I think like it took me a year to understand it, but I'm no good at it. Like it and so much more, right? Like web development had, you had to be good at jQuery and prototype and MooTools and ext.js. I was doing a lot of client work, so you can imagine like a lot of different requirements and stuff like that. But it like really bothered me. I love this GIF. This is the best one. I'm gonna leave it up there for a few seconds. Uh, but it's insane, but then, okay, then you say, okay, fine, I'm gonna dig in and I'm gonna get good at this. I'm gonna spend years getting good at this. This is a screenshot from my first talk, like five or six years ago, I think, I don't even remember, uh, where I gave a talk about how you should arrange your style sheets and your models and your views and controllers and what pieces you should use, what backbone plugins you should use. And then immediately that got destroyed. Like all that knowledge just got chucked out. It happened in 2013 uh, in JSConf US I picked out this particular slide. Oh, I added that emoji, by the way. I think this is the slide that drew people out of the room, where they're like, yeah, Facebook is not serious about this. The fact that they want to bring XML back. And I, like, who the hell has seen Jordan walk, whether he even exists after that? Like, anyway, so, but React came, and it just completely changed the game. And like, you, you, the first time you look at it, it doesn't make sense. They're using classes, and they're doing inline HTML, and inline CSS, and handlers everything that you've thought for the last 10 years to be like garbage, don't ever do that. So let's look at that previous example written as a React component, okay? And this is where the genius of it like shines through. <laughs> the point is that you should be able to write an in inline event handler and the computer, React in this case, will do event delegation for you. That makes way more sense. Why would you expect a human to do that if a computer can do it for you? You should be able to use pointy syntax in your JavaScript and we will convert it to objects. And you're like, okay, that's a good idea. Give me more of that. And then they said, oh, you have to use CSS selectors. At which point I was like, yeah, no. So we, fi we fixed that as well. So we this works if you use Glamour. And this is perfect. This is exactly how I want to feel when I'm writing my code. There is nothing extra here. Every single word, every single character means something. It has no, no talk about any library. I don't see anything. This is how I want to write code. So that's what React did. And then it introduced the problem, okay? The problem is that humans read and write differently from computers. This is why everybody hates on CSS in JS because there's, they're like, there's no way that's performant and you're going to increase the size of your JS bundle and reasons. And, but you're like, no, but this is the way I want to express myself. The less time I spend thinking about what the computer has to do is more time that I can build stuff for my users. You know, people say that developer experience is what make, uh, like the React folks only care about DX, they don't care about UX. I'm like, no, DX is what enables good UX. For years, we have been saying no to requests on how to like implement stuff. Anyway, so what we want to do then, let's just go back to that, just the React example. We want to write code like this, but we want the computer to read it like this, right? Just in that CSS thing, like, never mind everything else. So this is actually doable. Uh, a bunch of you would have used Babel plugins, you know, like little plugins that you put in your Babel pipeline that just converts your JavaScript at compile time. So you don't give that cost to the user, like you do it freehand. 
but they're really like, they're not accessible to developers. It takes a particular skill and like learning time and investment in effort to do it right. Uh, also, it won't work with Create React app and other tools like it because clearly you, you don't have access to the Babel config, Webpack config, or even if you're like in a big company, no one's gonna let you add like changes to it just because you want to write funky syntax. So I made a request. What I really did was I went up to Dan because I work in the same office as him now and I knocked his table, I was like, let's fix this, let's fix this. He's like, do, do it the right way, put it out there, let's see what people have to say. So I did. I put it out there and I said, hey, what if we could use functions and like JSX and stuff like we already do, but we can write custom compilers that like pull that out and make it good for a computer. Like, you know what? You should be able to write inline CSS and it should just strip it out into a CSS file for you. I gave a little example of that last year if any of you were here, but that's the idea. So, and it should be super accessible. And within like, like an hour or so, the man shows up and he's like, guys, this is a great idea, I'm going to do it. I'm going to implement it. I'm like, what, really? And he's like, yeah, really. And I shit you not, like half an hour before he's going out for his anniversary dinner, he's like, just wait, I really need to push this to NPM. Uh, and, he's, and he gets it out there and it works and it's amazing. So this is the moment I want, just want to talk about Kent, okay? <laughs> I want to spend a good few seconds just talking about Kent. So Kent is the nicest dude on the planet. <laughs> I, I'll try. I love Kent. <laughs> I really love Kent. If I wasn't clear, I really love Kent. Like, I want to be him when I grow up. I'm like 10 years older than him and I'm saying this. Like, <laughs> he's so cool. Like, he'll share his knowledge with everyone for free. Like, constantly. He, he manages a work, uh, like a, a day job, and a family, and children, and a dog. And he says, you know what? I'm going to build this library for you, and I'm going to teach you this, and I'm going to be so polite when I'm doing it. It's just amazing. <laughs> So what came out of this experiment that we built, Babel Macros? Well, it's got renamed to Babel Plugin Macros, but you can do some cool stuff with it now. For example, you can write server-side code inside your browser code. To be clear, you write the top code where you're doing, you're reading from a file, and when it gets compiled, it actually pulls it out and pulls it, puts it into the JavaScript. That's what's on the bottom. That's amazing. You can write node code inside your browser code. Wild. Then there's something called param.macro, uh, somebody named Cityside, well that's not his real name, clearly. But uh, he talked about partial application and lambda parameter syntax for JavaScript, which is inspired by Scala. I'll admit I also put the screenshot here so I, f like, like I know what he's talking about, yeah, because I don't, <laughs> but it's really cool. Like he applies functional programming principles directly to j the JavaScript that we know and love, and it just works like with syntax highlighting and everything. This is one of my favorites. It's called import all. You know how you can only import one file at a time or require one file at a time? But what you really want to do is say, give me all the modules in this one folder. Sometimes, you don't really want to do that. But suppose you want to. Then you should be able to write a line which says import all something something star.js and it should get compiled down to all the files that are there. The moment you delete a file, boom, it compiles and it goes away. You don't have to do anything. That's pretty cool. This is something somebody reached out to me like last night about. Uh, this is, hi Bukhari, I have this little shout out to Bukhari. So he wants like the view-like syntax, but for React and not as strings. I think that's one thing that we really need to steal from the view land, like the very terse templates, it's very clear. So you should be able to write JavaScript which says contact in user.contacts uh, user and it should generate uh, each node that you want to do. Right, that's pretty cool. So Babel plugin macros is actually out there. So. Goal number one of my talk was to get more people involved in it and build it for their needs. Imagine what you would implement as a function or job, like as a class or whatever else, and ask yourself if, if you can pull it into compile time way before you like bundle and send it to the user. Cool. Uh, I'm actually going pretty quick, so I get it that you're all tired. We'll end soon, don't worry, it's okay. The second part of what I want to talk about is what I really want for us to go forward as. What I really want us to do is to stop writing code, okay? Hear me out. Uh, I think it's weird that like UI developers build command line tools. We, sp we build user interfaces with buttons and clickies and areas and flexbox and colors for everybody else except for ourselves. Like if I have to see another Webpack config again, a buggy Webpack config, I'll scream. Like why? Why are we doing this? Why can we not build a tool that like shows it nicely? 
Also, what I'm saying is that I want to stop writing most code. I get that JavaScript is powerful. I get that any Turing complete language is powerful. Uh, so I do definitely want the option to be able to step in. Now, mind you, I'm not talking about like design tools like Figma or Sketch, even though those are great, or Compositor, which is like just awesome. Uh, I don't want two tabs, two apps. No, I want it like I want to. Be, I want to completely control my code. Please explain to me why I cannot do this yet. <laughs> right? Why can I not just adjust these values right in my editor? Sublime text, VS Code, Atom, the three Emacs people in the crowd. Uh, <laughs> so why can't I do this? Like, why, well, this seems like something that we should have built years ago. Why are we still trying to get syntax errors and stuff like that. I should be able to drag and drop a box here and like change the colors and the size and how it fits into its container. It should be as simple as that. Why can't I do this? When I go into my package.json file, why can I not search for a module and directly install it there? Why do I have to go to a website or open up my terminal for this? This is where the data lives. This is readable. I should be able to do this. I, I, it's struck out because I already built this and nobody stole the idea. This is how you should be, yeah, I did. So this is how you should start, this is how you should teach JavaScript to somebody, right? You shouldn't be teaching JavaScript by saying, okay, let's start with Webpack. Okay, let's set up Babel and the loader. <laughs> and let's set up a CSS loader. I'm like, do I get to write code at any point of time? I think the order is important. The first thing you want them to do is give them the same experience that I had like 13 years ago. Damn. Uh, that, like they should be able to write code and immediately run it. And we are user interface developers. We should be building these interfaces for them. This is a call to arms to all of us. Please, not just this idea, all ideas. And the React community is awesome for this. We steal from anybody, shameless, right? <laughs> uh, but please steal, like this big idea is what I think I'm gonna be working on like for the next couple of years. I mean, assuming my life and work gives me time for that. Uh, or maybe I'll convince the job to like sponsor it. I say, oh, it's good for Facebook. We should do it. Uh, but please, like, this is a call to arms to all of us to look at the tools that we use to create beautiful user experiences for everybody else. Because the moment you enhance your developer experience, you have so much headspace to think for, about the user. You don't have to worry about how objects are interacting with each other or like the number of semicolons. Is that still a thing after Prettier, by the way? I think we stopped arguing about it, right? Yeah, okay, cool, cool. Uh, but that's not what we should be talking about at all. We should not be talking about CSS and JS on Twitter. It's so boring. It's like really, bo like, get over it. Like the entire point was to say, okay, here's a solution for some people who the older ecosystem doesn't support and done, we're good. Like everybody has a solution, move forward. But damn, we like argue about syntax and stuff now, like for these libraries. We shouldn't be. We should be looking at output. We should be sharing applications instead of libraries, right? We should be dropping apps like every week. Uh, that's kind of my talk. I know it's like not very satisfying. I don't have anything to release. But I, <laughs> it's true. And like I'm holding up like the lightning uh, speakers. Uh, but. This is, this is the big call to arms. This is a call to arms for all of us to consider what we are actually doing in our day-to-day -day life to actually satisfy user concerns. I learned this word, mercy, thank you. <laughs>